Hey everybody, it's Lynn from Lens Crafts. I'm just coming by today to basically let you watch what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm gonna make these heart earrings, bumblebee earrings. And I've got a messy paper and messy clay and this ought to be a good one. Alright, I'm just gonna start shaping my heart. My heart. I've just got a paintbrush. Uh, it's a rubber sculpting tool, a paintbrush, or whatever you want to use. And it really is that simple to make a heart. Right. Then I've got my favorite tool, my knitting needle. <laughs> and I say favorite tool because I actually got it at a resale shop for, I think it was a quarter for the package of them. Alright, now just pretend those are bumblebee stripes. <laughs> I've got my hat pin, corsage pin, and I'm just going to. The best way to center a hole is to try to spin. As you can see, when I turned it, that pin is not anywhere near straight. Almost in the center. There we go. Alright. Don't worry about where it pokes through the first time. It's easy enough to cover up. Alright, now I'm just going to give it a little spin on the corsage pin. Flip it around and go the other way. Alright. We're just going to touch up our holes just a tiny bit. This clay is super soft. Alright, there we go. I'll do the same thing to the other one. Alright, now at this point, if your clay is too soft, you can stick it in the fridge for a few minutes, um, stick it in the freezer for, for a few minutes, and firm it back up before you go back to work on it. <clears throat> Alright, I've just spooled off a little, it's actually craft wire, beading wire, and I'm going to make some wings. And if you want them to look the same on each side, you can use your first side as a pattern. when the battery dies <laughs> all right so I've made the first loop and then looped around the end that I had sticking out and 
and then created a larger loop on the top. Alright. This is one of the reasons why I don't do wire work. It's fiddly. I so need to learn. <laughs> How to do it. Alright, and then I'm just going to clip off the tally. <laughs> With my clippers. Alright, nowhere even near close. But Alright, and then I'm going to take my heart. And on the side, I'm going to... Cut her open with my craft knife. And then wait for my. Because I still can't remember to set it upside down. just gonna embed that pretty far up in there and pinch it closed right, we'll flip it over to the other side I'm going to make sure that my hole is still accessible. And then I'm going to fix up my detail just a little bit. As you can see, my clay is not clean. You can take some rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip and you can wipe all of that dirt away and it'll be fine. And then I'm going to bake it in the oven um, for 40 minutes. Alright. And I shall be back after I charge the battery. All right, these are out of the oven, cooled off, and now I'm just going to paint them with a cheap black acrylic paint, an inexpensive black acrylic paint. <laughs> it's just Apple Barrel, which I love, don't get me wrong. I'm a firm believer in cheap craft paints uh, when you're painting polymer clay. Um, you can bake them in the oven. They don't darken. They don't put off bad fumes or anything like that. I can't tell you how many times I have painted something and then stuck it back in the oven. Just as a matter of, uh, just as a matter of course, it happens sometimes in the, in the, steps it takes to create a piece so now I'm just gonna wop it back off and if you're worried that your yellow doesn't come back out what you can do is you can let the paint dry and then you can come back and sand the high spots You can also take a damp um, cloth, a damp baby wipe, which I don't happen to have any right now. <laughs> this is the Lenscraft Show. I'm out of everything.
Not really. I'm not out of clay. <laughs> and I'm not out of wire. I'm good to go on those two things. And I'm not out of paint. I am out of paint, but it's only because I've got a full bottle somewhere. Alright, and another tip. Don't use your good brushes when you're just adding some uh, antiquing. Um, use your cruddiest brush. You want to really scrub it in to get it into the nooks and crannies. Alright. Alright, I'm going to come back and show you what else we're going to do to this. Alright, I've just got a foam sanding block, a drywall sanding block, and it's been used many times, you can see. I know lots of people use wet dry sandpaper, and they swear you shouldn't use anything else, but I don't do a lot of sanding, really and truly. Only when I'm making cabochons. See that bring out the color without taking away as much of the uh, antiquing as we put on there. And normally I would use an antiquing cream. But uh, I didn't this time. <laughs> I wanted you to see that you can do this with just the simplest of um, supplies. Alright. There we go. I will come back and, and uh, after I've cleaned this up a little bit more. I'll add a little bit of Inca Gold or just a little touch of gold acrylic paint. Just get it a little on your finger and just barely rub over the surfaces and it will give you the same effect. Alright. And then because um, acrylic paint is a surface effect and although it's permanent when dry in a jewelry situation it can be scratched off not necessarily with your fingernail but if it rubbed up against uh, something with a metal surface or something it could scratch it so I would seal it all right all right all right I've just got some um, gold <laughs> Not sure what it says. Gleams by Delta. And I've just got a little on my finger. And as you can see, it's not covering up the yellow. It's just giving it a little shimmer. Whoop. Got a little in my in my black. I can go over that. Alright. Alright, I would seal these and then I would run a head pin, an eye pin, through the hole and put another loop on the top and I'm gonna make a pair of earrings out of these and I know they look large for earrings she said she wanted them large <laughs> all right so I'll get my supplies out and I'll come back and show that all right. I've got a three inch eye pin a couple of little silver seed beads a glass iridescent yellow bead and a couple of these are crackle glass and they're half black 
All right, I'm going to start with a seed bead. And I'm going to thread the, butter, the butterfly. Uh -huh. No, I actually will need one more seed bead. Put the seed bead top and bottom. Crackle glass, the iridescent yellow, and the crackle glass. And then our final seed bead. And then I've just got another, I just took a shorter head pin and threaded a shorter version. And that's going to hang from here. Alright. Alright, that is it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed the kind of sneak peek of what I got coming up eventually. Alright, I shall holler at y'all later. Bye now.